Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion today is gallbladder carcinoma. So gallbladder carcinoma means neoplastic malignant proliferation of gallbladder epithelium. The gallbladder carcinoma in 95% of cases is adenocarcinoma. Adeno means glandular and carcinoma means malignant proliferation of epithelial cells. So gallbladder carcinoma is more common in females than the males, the ratio being 2 ratio 1. The major factor in this is female predominance to formation of gallstones. It is more common in certain ethnicities than the other. For example, it is common in South American countries and less common in the Asian countries. Moreover, in United States, it is more common in the native population and Hispanic groups. Moreover, the formation of gallstones also predisposes to the development of carcinoma and chronic cholecystitis is important since it can transform into a calcified gallbladder known as porcelain gallbladder. Porcelain gallbladder is a major risk for gallbladder carcinoma. These gallstones and chronic inflammation is a major risk factor in mostly the Asian countries. Moreover, certain parasitic infections like Ascariasis also predisposes to gallbladder carcinoma. The age of the discovery is usually between 60 to 70 years of age and by that time most patients are unfit for the surgical removal and therefore the prognosis of gallbladder carcinoma is poor with 5 year survival rate less than 10%. There are certain risk factors of chronic inflammation of gallbladder such as gallstones which intermittently obstruct the gallbladder hence resulting in the chronic inflammation. So in chronic inflammation there is a repeated cycle of injury and regeneration of the cells. This injury and regeneration increases the risks of mutations. So like all the other malignancies there are also mutations in the tumor suppressor genes such as TP53 which inhibit the excessive cell growth in the normal conditions. Once this gene is mutated, there is increased uncontrolled cell growth. Moreover, there is also mutation in the proto-oncogenes. In this particular case, ERBB2 proto-oncogene is of key importance. Proto-oncogenes are the genes that normally promote the cell division and cell growth. So in this case, there is a gain of function mutation in proto-oncogenes which results in excessive cell growth and cell proliferation. So these mutations in tumor suppressor genes as well as proto-oncogenes increase the cell growth and cell proliferation, hence forming a malignant tumor. Certain infections are also thought to play an important role in the development of malignant tumor such as helicobacter and chronic salmonella infections. The carcinoma of gallbladder forms two types of growth patterns. First is the infiltrating growth which means the tumor invades the wall of gallbladder and the other growth pattern is exophytic. In this case the tumor projects into the lumen. So the cancerous cells form a glandular growth pattern which either form the papilla or they may have infiltrative growth pattern. The papilla are exophytic growth Papilla are actually the finger like projections. Let's say this is the gallbladder epithelium and this inside is the lumen. So papilla are actually the finger like growth patterns that project into the lumen. As you can see here in this picture these are the glands formed by the malignant cells. These are the malignant tumor cells which are forming the glands. This also is a gland. This is the lumen of the gland. These are the tumor cells. The tumor cells may be moderately to well differentiated in papillary growth. Moderately to well differentiated means that these cells resemble the gallbladder epithelium. Whereas in cases of infiltrative growth pattern, the tumor cells are mostly undifferentiated to poorly differentiated. Undifferentiated means that these cells do not resemble the gallbladder epithelium. Hence these cells are mostly round. They have central nuclei and they have extensive cytoplasm. These cells resemble primitive cells. 
the adenocarcinoma with the papillary or exophytic growth have a good prognosis whereas the infiltrative growth having undifferentiated to poorly differentiated cells have a bad prognosis moreover between these cells and the glands you can also see there is fibrosis as well almost in 5% of the tumors there is also adenosquamous differentiation of the tumor cells which means in addition to the glandular epithelial cells there are squamous cells as well certain tumors also reveal carcinoid features which means they have epithelial as well as mesenchymal tumor cells the malignant tumors have excessive mitotic bodies and areas of focal necrosis are also present so let's recall the morphology there are five things that you have to explain in the histology of a tumor the first is the growth pattern in this case the growth pattern is either infiltrating or it is exophytic and the tumor cells are forming gland like proliferations or adenocarcinoma the second feature is the defining of cells the cells can be moderately to well differentiated in papillary growth or exophytic growth and they are undifferentiated to poorly differentiated in infiltrative growth the third point is about the mitosis there are extensive mitotic bodies in the malignant tumor whereas they are less in the benign tumor the fourth point is focal necrosis which is present in the malignant tumors and it is absent in the benign tumors the fifth point is the specific identification feature of the tumor in this case the specific identification feature is the adenosquamous differentiation of the cells and carcinoid features carcinoid features mean epithelial as well as mesenchymal cells in the tumor most patients are asymptomatic in the early disease and at the late stage of almost 60 to 70 years either the tumor is incidentally discovered or the patient presents with the non specific symptoms such as abdominal pain nausea vomiting and loss of appetite there is also a history of weight loss and a history of repeated attacks of cholecystitis or the patient might present with the cholecystitis which is occurring due to obstruction of gall bladder there is also a strong history of repeated infections or repeated episodes of right hypochondrial pain mri and contrast enhanced ct scan of the abdomen are done to establish the extent of the tumor moreover the definite diagnosis is based on the histological report of the biopsy these tumors mostly metastasize to liver peritoneum gastrointestinal tract and hepatoportal lymph nodes the treatment is surgical removal of gall bladder along with the part of the hepatic tissue and chemotherapy so this brings us to the end of discussion about gall bladder carcinoma if you have any questions do let us know in the comment section thank you